Hello my dear friends, I am Cory and today I am going to show you how to make your own custom made decals. Decals, the best friends for those of you who don't know how to free hands on their miniatures. Like me. <laughs> now this may sound like an unpopular opinion, but I actually think that decals are great and I love to use them on my models. But with all the great things there are some problems. In this case, that what if you want to create your own decals? Most of the times decals come inside the box of the miniatures that we have bought, but what if we want to do something more personalized? Most of the time I don't really like to follow the rules in terms of color schemes, I prefer to make my own and create my own pattern of color scheme on my miniatures. But what happens if you have to use decals on them? You can't use decals that represent a specific uh, Space Marine chapter, for example, on a totally different color scheme. Well, here is where custom-made decals come handy, but how do you create them? Well, there are plenty of videos out there that will show you how to make your decals, but in my opinion, if I have to be honest, those are not really totally helpful. Let's just say it this way, don't get me wrong, those are great videos out there, there are plenty of great videos that will help you to create your own decals, but I think that there is a more easy, simple and quick way to make your own decals for your miniatures. Right now the best video that show you how to make your own decals, beside this one that you're watching right now, is the one from Zumikito Miniatures. He made a great video that I would leave the link down in the description if you want to check it out. He made this video and he showed you how to make your own decal using Photoshop, which is a great program, but in my opinion it's not the best program that you can use on your computer to make your own decals. The best program in my opinion to make your own decal is not Photoshop but actually Illustrator which is another program from Adobe because it gives you the option of turning your image not into a pixels but actually into vectors. But I'm going to explain you what I mean later. At the moment let's go not on the obby table, not yet at least, but let's go on my computer so that I can show you how to create your own custom made decal using Illustrator. And little disclaimer, I am not a computer guy, I am not a tech guy, I don't know how to use this program in a professional way, I am sure that I'm going to make a lot of mistakes and uh, I am well aware of that and for that I am sorry. Uh, if there are more easy way to do the stuff that I'm going to show you, let me know down in the comment. For the rest, let's go to the computer so that I can show you how to use Illustrator to create your own custom made decals. All right, so we are on my computer and oh boy, I'm not very good looking at the moment. But anyway, just look at the desktop, don't look at me. <laughs> anyway, we are on my computer. Now, in order to create a decal uh, paper, we need some images to put onto our paper. And for the purpose, we need to go to Google and look for PNG images, which are images that have a transparent background. Uh, this, will, this is what we actually need in order to create smooth and very nice decals. Now I already have one here but just so that you can see what I mean you can just go to Google and type um, let's just say for example uh, Celtic uh, knot which is a nice symbol and then you will just type PNG of course you can type whatever you want but PNG is vital because that way you will only find PNG images like this and you go to images then you will look for uh, images with a transparent background which is this background that you can see here with all this um, black black gray and white squares this is a transparent background. Then you just go to the website, download it, and you have your PNG. Now, 
I already have a PNG image here, which is this Anubi head, which is a symbol that I have already used for some of my decals, which is the symbol of my custom made Space Marine chapter. Now that you have an image that you want to transform into decals, we are going to open Illustrator. Then you're just going to type file and new, or you can just press Ctrl N and you will be uh, welcome by this window here and I suggest you uh, choose the A4 format because uh, most of the paper, the printable decal paper that you uh, can buy out there are in A4 format. I know that there is also the A5 but the A4 is the most common so just click A4 and then create. All right we have our white A4 paper now, the only thing that you need to do is to take your PNG image and drag it into the paper. All right. Now, at the moment, this is the image, which is not being vectorialized. Is, is that a correct word? Anyway, we need to transform it, this image into vectors. And I'm going to explain you what, does, what that means in a moment. Now, if you zoom in, you will see that there are going to be a lot of pixels. And if you try to stretch this image, you will see that you are not going to obtain a very smooth and crispy image. You are going to see a lot of pixels, especially if you're going to make it larger or if you're going to uh, make a smaller size of it. Now, in order to solve this problem, and this is why I prefer Illustrator, we need to transform this image into vectors. What that means, basically, I'm not a tech guy, I'm not a computer guy, and I, of course, I am absolutely not an Illustrator professional user. I am a very noob and a beginner of this website, of, of this uh, program. But anyway, vectors mean that it's going to transform the image and it's going to um, eliminate the pixels and will transform the image into uh, curves. This means that when you're going to stretch your image and resize it, it doesn't matter how big or small this image you, it will become, it will be always be a perfect um, uh, image without any issue, without uh, losing any quality. Now, in order to do this, we need to click on our image. Then here on the right, you will have to click image trace. Then is going to then after you click it, it's going to open this little window here, which basically asking you what kind of uh, fidelity you want out of this image. I suggest you go with high fidelity photos. Of course, you can go with three colors. In this case, there are only two, which are red and black, but you can go three, low fidelity, six, 16. It depends. You can transform into vectors, even photos if you want pictures, but go always with high fidelity. It's just a simple thing to do, I guess. I don't know. Let me know. <laughs> now, after clicking it, our image is a vector. This means that it doesn't matter how much we are going to resize this image, it will always be a perfect quality. You are not going to see any pixels. Now I'm really out of bounds. You see, I have just make it a I even go out of the paper size and still you can see pixels. And this is a good thing because we, for our decals, we want the best quality possible. Now you may ask, oh, all right, this is all great and cool, but how do I know how much big or small I have to resize this image? Well, this is very simple. Basically, you have to take the measurements of the place that you want to apply the decal on. So for example, let's just say that we want to apply our decal into a area uh, of an inch wide and an inch tall, for example, you will just need to click off the image. Then here on the top right, you will see this, which is units. Now is on point, but you can change like inches, millimeters, centimeters, pixels, 
for example, I just say inches. Now, if you click shift and go here, you will see that white and height are in inches and you can choose whatever kind of measures you want. In this case, I have made an image that is one inch tall and one inch wide. Now, inches are cool and all, but since I am part of the metric system master race, I'm going to use a centimeter for this. And let's just say that I want an image which is one centimeter per one centimeters, like this. Now you choose a random spot to place your image. I always tend to choose the top left. Then you can just click the image, go to edit and copy, or you can just press Ctrl C and then you can re-click edit and then past or uh, click Ctrl V. This will create a copy. There you go. And then you can place it here. Then you just do this. You can select two at a time. Ctrl C, Ctrl V. And now you have two. Then do the same. And the programs fucking crash. No. <laughs> All right. Okay. <laughs> you have eight right now. Now you have just to do this as many times as you want until you fill the entire paper. Then you can just go to File, Export, Export As, and you can export it as a lot of format, but I suggest you export it and to, into a JPEG. This way you will create an entire uh, JPEG image with, uh, the, with the A4 size that you can print onto your, your A4 decal paper sheets. Now, I already have this type of decal already printed, but I want this uh, decal to be a little bit bigger because I want to place the symbols onto vehicles like rhinos, etc. So I'm just going to modify these images a little bit and then I'm going to print it out and we can go to the Omni table so that I can show you how to apply these decals. See you in a moment. All right, I have printed a couple of papers with the symbol that I've shown you previously on the computer. Now I am going to show you how they present themselves. Uh, keep in mind, these are clear, transparent papers. What does this mean? Well, basically, uh, there are two type of paper, this one that are clear and other that have a white background, because you have to keep in mind that printer in most cases cannot print white. So if you want to have white decals, you will have to use those kind of paper. When I'm going to cut away this Anubi head, um, the only two colors that will remain are going to be black and the little red eye. The white here is not going to be uh, applied onto the decals because again, these are transparent. But anyway, you are going to see what I'm talking about in just a moment. Let's go to the hobby table. All right, here we are on the hobby table and here we have our decal paper print freshly printed. Now, uh, I'm not, it's not going to be entirely shown in the frame because the frame is not very good as always. But anyway, this is the decal paper that I have printed. Now, something that I forgot to mention before is that beside being careful of what kind of uh, background you have on your paper, so white or transparent, you also have to keep in mind that there are specific type of paper for specific type of printers. What I mean here is that there are two kinds of papers, papers created for laser printers and papers for inkjet printers. Now, this one that I'm using here is a laser, is for laser printers, um, which mean basically that after you have printed your decals, the paper sheet is ready to be used. You don't have to do anything else because for what I can understand, the color is directly injected into the paper. So you're ready to go. 
On the other hand, if you're using an inkjet paper, you will have to be careful because there is a possibility that the decal might be damaged when you are going to soak the, the decal into water. So my suggestion is to spray a couple of coat of a transparent varnish in order to protect the decal from water so that the risk of potentially damaging the decals is reduced almost to zero. Anyway, this is the paper and this is our test subject, which is a little marine that I have painted for the occasion. Now, what we are going to do is, which is something that I have already done, cut away the, the decal. Then we are just going to cut around it as close as we can to the actual design. This way we are going to reduce the surface of the decal. So it might be uh, more easy for it to stick on the surface that we want to place it like there we go like so you don't have to be super pre precise but just get the rough shape of the decal cut away like so and then we just go to soak the decal into water like this i'm realizing that this is also a tutorial on how to apply decal also well it might be even more useful this way anyway after you soak the decal into water just let it sit on a piece of paper for just for a couple of minutes in the meantime we can prepare our miniatures now to be sure that the decals that we want to apply is going to be um, placed well we need to paint something that will give the decal more, uh, a smooth surface in order to grab onto it so I suggest you use some gloss varnish. Now there are people that use Art Coat from Citadel. You can use gloss the gloss varnish from Army Painter. I'm going to use the decal fixer from Green Stuff Ward uh, because it sounds more professional. I don't know why, but you can use whatever you whatever uh, kind of varnish you want. I'm just going to use this one. Now grab your model and paint. The gloss, the gloss varnish onto the surface that you want to place your decal on. Like so. Okay, now let it dry for a couple of minutes. And then we can put our decal onto, in this case, the shoulder pad. All right, everything is ready. Now the only thing that we have to do is to place, to paint some water onto the in this case, the shoulder pads on, onto the place that we want to place our decal. And then we just slide the decal into place, like so. There you go. And then you just try to place it around the best way you can. Try not to make a mess like what I'm doing right now. Now you can leave it like this, just paint another um, coat of uh, decal fixer or gloss varnish on top of the decal to protect it and you're ready to go. But if you want to hear a little advice from me, I suggest you use a kind of a decal softener like this one here from Green Stuff Ward. Um, of course, you don't have to use this. There are a lot of decal softener out there like Micro Set or Micro Sol. Uh, even Tamiya have one of the, uh, have his own kind of decal softener. Anyway, this is a product that in my opinion is a great tool to have in your at your disposal and you're in your hobby table because this liquid can actually melt down a little bit of our decal this way it will be more smooth and place even better onto a surface especially onto a rounded surface like these shoulder pads that we have here so so what we do is soak up the water from our decal with your brush and then we are just going to paint this product onto the decal this way the decal will melt a little bit but not too much just to give us the chance to place it even better so that it would look like it is actually like it, it, it was painted onto our shoulder pads 
Now, if you have to replace the decal, like I have to do here, be very careful because it is going to be very easy for it to tear apart. Because this, because this liquid is literally melting the decal a little bit. Now let it sit for a couple of minutes and when everything is dried, just paint another coat of gloss varnish on top of it and we're finished. And here we are. Now, of course, it looks a little bit glossy because uh, it is a gloss varnish, of course, but don't worry, just paint some matte varnish or even better, spray some matte varnish on the entirety of the miniatures and you're ready to go. You will get rid of the glossiness. And well, I hope you have found this useful and I hope that your custom made decal are going to look amazing. And, well, of course, I, I hope better than what I have made right now. I'm sure that you are going to do some very great decals. And again, I hope you found this useful. Thank you very much, my friends. I hope you have found this video useful. And if you did, leave a like, subscribe, and also let me know down in the comments what you think about it. And most importantly, down in the description, you will find a link to the Izumi Kito Miniatures video. And go check out that video too. Subscribe to his channel and also tell him that I have sent you and just tell, tell him hi. I don't know. <laughs> anyway, go check out this video. Also down in the description, if you want, you will find a link for my Instagram. So if you want to follow me there, I would be very happy. And it will also be the link for my coffee. So if you want to burn a dollar to support me, you don't have to, of course. But if you really want, I would be eternally grateful to you. So my friends, this is the end of the video. I'm Corey, and I hope to see you the next time. Ciao, ciao.